You are listening to The Squeeze with just Anthony Pasquazi here today on YouTube. It's our first one back in a while. We had, uh, what, fall break a couple weeks ago, a couple Sundays ago. And then last Sunday, Alec Rude was out scouting, which is where he is again today. And I was uh, <clears throat> feeling a little hoarse. <laughs> I woke up and I was lacking a voice as I went to a concert. Then I did uh, my first two-hour radio show alone on KWNO, and then I woke up and just uh, didn't have a voice. But we're back here, just myself. For sure, we have Genesis Capacho, freshman on this women's soccer team coming in at 11.15. We may have a surprise guest as well <laughs> that I'm excited about at the same time. Frankie Bacalars, as always, will be in at 11.50 to discuss our uh, college football picks. They haven't been doing too well. It's actually been pretty evenly spread across the three of us, so we'll catch you up on that way later in the show. Smoo had an awesome weekend this weekend and last weekend. I was so bummed we couldn't cover it that my voice was gone. Both soccer teams won. The volleyball team won as well. They beat their second-ranked opponent at the time. And things were really looking up. Some of the teams still trending upwards. Some not so much. Also, hockey got underway this weekend. A couple of exhibition games going there here at St. Mary's. Both the men and women. The men or the women favored a little bit better than the men did. Also, there was a scrimmage, a basketball scrimmage against UW Superior. That was quite fun to watch. We'll talk a little bit about that as well. I'm going to be very honest in that segment about what I saw yesterday in that basketball gym. I had a pretty eventful weekend myself. Um, I called my parents on, what was it, Thursday? Maybe Friday. Friday night. And I said, hey, I auditioned for something. They're like, what? <laughs> I could hear my mom slapping me through the phone. She's like, you're already the busiest kid I know. What are you doing? And it's a good question. But there's a directing one class here uh, for theater majors at St. Mary's. I am not a theater major. I am far from it. But um, they are each directing a scene. There are 19 directors, and they needed cast members. So I uh, <laughs> was a little bit of a thespian in high school. So I decided to audition myself and I got a couple roles. <laughs> roles. So I'm quite excited about that. A little nervous because it's a lot of work and it's just more on my plate. Didn't necessarily need it, but I'm happy to be doing it. Uh, and then yesterday I had the honor of covering the Winona Windhawks in their first playoff game in the second round of the section two for no section one for a semifinals against Fairbo. I had the honor of covering it with TJ Leverance. He is a consummate pro in the play-by-play -play department. He's been doing it for years and uh, he's great at what he does. So it's easy being his color analyst. And I uh, love doing that over for Leighton Broadcasting on Real Country 95.3. I believe <laughs> I should probably learn the frequencies of the radio station I work at. That would be advisable. But uh, Winona won 62 to nothing. <laughs> wow. <laughs> 62 to nothing in a playoff game. Now every team in Minnesota makes the playoffs, which is a little bizarre if you ask me. But this team that they beat, Fairbo, actually beat another team, Albert Lee, uh, in the first round of the playoffs. So not a great showing from them, them, but it says more about Winona and Winona Windhawk football. The coach, John Castilius, has been there for years and years. His record is 75 and 73. He just got over the 500 mark a couple games ago. And that sounds like a struggling, middling coach. But in reality, this group of seniors that's at Winona did not lose a single home game their entire careers. They went 57 and four in the regular season in their whole careers. Casilius started his career at Winona one and 37 and has since gone. If you want to do the math, you can, I'm not going to gone well enough to finish 76 and 74 at the moment, heading in to further into the playoffs. They will most likely be playing Casson Manterville, a team that they beat by 10 earlier in the season. So really cool stuff there. Um, TJ and I had a nice conversation about what a high school football team can do for a relatively small town like this. I mean, Winona is probably the biggest town around here, at least in the section. But um, a relatively small town because every town you go to has their own 
team to root for. It's a lot different in Chicago, which is where I'm from, where, you know, every kind of neighborhood has a school. And then there's also a bunch of private schools and their allegiances fall all over the place. But around here where you have these, these farm towns, so to say, the, the towns care more about their high school football teams than just about anything else. And Winona has one of the best in 4A. They're ranked fifth in the state, and they have a good chance of going quite far in these state playoffs. So hopefully I can continue to cover them because I have a blast doing it. But enough about me. That's not why we're here. Before we get into St. Mary's sports, I have a very important quote for all of you. If you've seen this already, you're, you know, you're probably going to get a chuckle out of it. If you haven't seen it already, you might not understand it. But I laughed my butt off, and I'm going to share it with you right now. I like the guacamole. Now, I don't really love the guacamole, so I get it when I feel like it. They changed their guacamole from 150 to 180. I mean, 150 is already pretty darn high. So they changed it to 180, and I'll never again get guacamole. It's not about the guacamole itself. I just don't want to let them win. Wise words from none other than the consummate competitor, Zach Greinke. <laughs> I just, I think it's hilarious because it just, it, it gives you a little bit, little, little bit of an insight into the mind of a hyper competitive person where not only is he competing against other alpha athletes, he's also competing to uh, get the best deal at Chipotle, even though he has millions and millions of, of dollars. And, uh, I don't know. I've wavered back and forth on the whole guacamole chipotle thing. It's fine. It's not even great guacamole. It's so expensive though. Like it really is. So I really have to be feeling the guacamole if I'm going to get it. And I don't have millions of dollars. So it makes sense for, for me to be <laughs> questioning whether or not I get the extra guacamole. But Zach Greinke, yeah, always trying to win in everything that he does, including his order at Chipotle. <laughs> you know who else is always trying to win? The Cardinals here at St. Mary's. I don't get paid big bucks. But if I did, that one would have deserved it. The women's hockey team faced off against Northland College yesterday in an exhibition game. So these statistics don't count. Just something to knock the rust off for this team. Give freshmen you know, a new look into what college hockey is. This is courtesy of our sports information director, Donnie Nadeau. Winona, Minnesota, it may have been an exhibition game, but the St. Mary's University women's hockey team's performance Saturday afternoon certainly put a smile on first-year coach Sarah Murray's face. The Cardinals erupted for five goals, including two each in the second and third periods as they rolled to a 5-0 victory over Northland at the St. Mary's Ice Arena. Natalie Ryan, coming off an all-conference year last season, scored a pair of goals for the Cardinals, while Sophia Zebro, Delaney Wolf, and Sydney Green accounted for St. Mary's other three goals. Green and Wolf also picked up assists with Jordan Majeski, while Jordan Majeski recorded a pair of helpers. Ryan opened the scoring with the only goal of the first period at 8.03. Zebro and Ryan netted the Cardinals two second period goals. Zebro's at 6.25 and Ryan's with eight seconds remaining to push the advantage to 3 nothing heading into the third period. Wolf found the back of the net just 50 seconds into the final stanza and Green wounded out rounded out the scoring with a goal at 11:26. All three goalies saw action for the Cardinals with Ari Ziakis stopping four shots in the first period while Jordan Keeley and Rachel Miller made five saves in both the second and third periods. The Cardinals officially kick off their 2019-2020 season on the road on November 2nd to the 3rd, heading to the Arrington Ice Arena in Adrian, Michigan, for a pair of games against the Bulldogs. The two teams will square off at 7 p.m. Eastern on November 2nd before returning for a 2 p.m. Eastern matinee the following day. Good luck to the women's hockey team as they notch their first game in regulation. The men did not favor so well. They've actually played two exhibition games already this season, losing their first one to University of Wisconsin Stout, four to one, and then yesterday losing to Marion four to two. The St. Mary's University men's hockey team closed out the preseason portion of its schedule Saturday evening, 
getting through the first minute of the second and third period proved to be the Cardinals' undoing. Marion scored 38 seconds into the second period and added a goal 32 seconds into the third before heading holding off a third period St. Mary's rally and route to a 4-2 win over the Cardinals in an exhibition game at the St. Mary's Ice Arena. After a scoreless first period, thanks in part to six saves from Cardinal goalie Blair Sanders, Marion quickly broke the stalemate as Connor Blank rifled a shot over the shoulder of Nick Nass just 38 seconds into the second stanza. And it was more of the same to open the third as the Sabres' loss in McDonald welcomed Cardinal goalie Parker Swanson by scoring just 32 seconds into the period to push Marion's advantage to two to nothing. Get this, Parker Swanson, the goalie, Parker Collie <laughs> gave the Sabres a little breathing room at 426 of the third, scoring Marion's second goal of the period to make it three to nothing. Two Parkers. Go figure. I've never met a Parker in my life. And they would need all of that breathing room as the Cardinals scored back-to-back -back goals midway through the third period to cut the deficit to three. Two. Dylan Robertson got St. Mary's on the board at 719 of the period, and Nikita Shebarov from Russia followed with a goal of his own 22 seconds later. That, however, would be as close as the Cardinals would get as Marion's Zach Lawrence rounded out the scoring, netting Marion's third goal of the period with just over three minutes remaining. All three Cardinal goalies played a 22-minute period with Sanders stopping all six shots he faced while Nass made seven saves and Swanson finished with three saves in the third. So interesting there. The goalie who many would say is not going to get much playing time this year actually had the best showing in their second exhibition game. Game, that being Blair Sanders with the clean sheet in the first period. They head out to Lake. No, they're actually here this weekend. The first and second Lake Forest is coming to St. Mary's. Those games will count. Those statistics will count 7 p.m. on Friday and 3 p.m. on Saturday. Be sure to make your way out to both of those games if you can. I know everybody's busy. I'm busy too. But support your friends, support your classmates, support your teammates. Uh, in everything that they do. Boy, has it been a roller coaster for this smooth volleyball team. All early season long, I was quite frustrated with them because I knew that they had all the talent in the world and they just were not capitalizing. And then, just as I come out, staunchly saying that on the squeeze right here with myself and typically Alec Rude and that other chair over there, I said... Uh, I'm disappointed in them. <laughs> I'm actually a little angry with them. Just after I said that, oh, they just take down the fifth ranked team in the nation, <laughs> St. Ben's three to one. Oh yeah. And then they beat Concordia three, two. Uh, they come back from a down O oh, two and then they beat the 23rd ranked St. Olaf Oles in four sets. And things were looking up. I was even talking to Donnie Nadeau about what if they beat Augsburg, another nationally ranked opponent. That's three nationally ranked opponents in 10 days. I would even suggest that maybe they should have been nationally ranked. Sadly, that conversation could not happen because they lost to Augsburg three to one. Then they lost to university of Northwestern, not the big one. This one's in Minnesota. They lost to them in straight sets. And then they lost to St. Kate's. Three, two, one. This courtesy, again, of Donnie Nadeau. The St. Mary's University volleyball team entered Saturday's showdown against St. Catherine, still in the hunt for one of the six Mayak tournament berths. A win against the Wildcats would be a huge step in the postseason direction. St. Catherine, however, had other ideas as the Wildcats dealt St. Mary's playoff hopes a crushing blow with a 3-1 victory over the Cardinals at Butler Center in St. Paul, Minnesota. The Wildcats jumped out early, taking the first set 25-17, to but the Cardinals rebounded in impressive fashion, rolling to a 25-13 to win in the second set to not the match at 1-1. From there, however, it was as St. Catherine as the Wild... It was all St. Catherine as the Wildcats rattled off wins 25-23 and 25-21 to close out the match. Lexi Barth. Aaron Lime, Coral Anderson, Lillian Braun, and DJ Babb all leading the way for the Cardinals. The Cardinals now 4-5 and five in the Mayak, slipped to 7th place. One win out of the 16 Mayak postseason chase with two matches remaining are back in Mayak play on Wednesday, heading to Northfield, Minnesota for a 7 p.m. matchup against Carlton. Now, things are not looking good for the Cardinals. They have two matches left, one against Carlton, one against Gustavus. Carlton, two and seven, should be an easy win. 
But St. Cat, St. Kate's also probably should have been an easy win, and they struggled there. And then they go up against Gustavus, who is above them in the standings, and they have not yet clinched a playoff spot. They're at five and four. So I have not sat down and gone through all the different permutations and possibilities of the playoff chances for the Cardinals, but they're not great. They're still in it. They have not been eliminated from the playoffs yet, but they're not looking great. The only thing they can do is win their last two matches and see if the cards fall their way. St. Thomas, Augsburg, and St. Ben's have already clinched playoff berth. St. Thomas, a staggering 9-0. and Augsburg, 7-2. and St. Ben's, 7-2 and as well. Wow, this has been a lot of St. Mary's sports. But that's what the squeeze is now. One hour, every Sunday, nothing but St. Mary's sports. We'll be right back with Genesis Capacho and possibly a guest, <laughs> a guest guest, a surprise guest uh, as well. So stay tuned. Thanks for listening to The Squeeze. We will be right back with Genesis Capasho. You are listening to The Squeeze with Anthony Pasquazi on YouTube. Thanks for tuning in. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe button and the like button as well. This is Genesis Capacho. Yes. She's a freshman on the SMU soccer team. And this, a friend of the show, is Cassie Arriaga. She was on the show last year around this time. It might have been a little bit earlier. So she's an old pro at this. And I just, I snapped her this morning. I'm like, hey, I got a great idea. Why don't you come on the show? And she did. So I want to thank her for just dropping in as a surprise guest. So thank you both for being here. Thank you for having yeah. me. Yeah. Us. Absolutely. Cassie, you're going to. Thank you. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so the reason I wanted the two of them here is because for the first time in a long time, the St. Mary's women's soccer team has won two MIAC games in a row, two conference games in a row. You've actually, what, you're 3 0 and 1 in your last four games, two of them being conference games. And Genesis was the game winning, had the game winning goal against Concordia in second overtime. And Cassie had the game winning goal yesterday against Hamlin, not in overtime, in regulation. So, Genesis, I'm going to ask you first what did it mean to you to score your first ever collegiate goal in such a big spot? Oh, it felt so great. Like, I, I just wanted to finally like do something because I've been wanting a goal for so long. And then, you know, it was senior day, so I was like, might as well just like. I was feeling it too before the game. I was like, I feel it. I feel it today. I feel like I'm going to score. And then I did. And it, it was great. Like the energy, the atmosphere is just amazing. Yeah. So I, I mean, I wasn't there, sadly, but I was walking to my, uh, like, whatever, my dorm mm -hmm. from the parking lot because I just get, got done with my show. And you scored the goal. And I seriously thought, like, the world was ending because the, the, the <laughs> roar of the crowd was absolutely insane. Yeah. So, I mean, just a storybook uh, first goal for you. It was, it was, yeah, it was just, 
magical moment. Magical moment. I, I love <laughs> yes. it. I, as cliche as it sounds, I love it. And then Cassie, I mean, this is old hat for you. You had what five goals last year, uh, four goals this year. So you're on pace. You're getting there. Hopefully you can you can match it from freshman year. Uh, what did that goal against Hamlin yesterday mean to you? It was a lot. I hurt my back for it. You hurt your back for it. Okay, what happened? Body on the line. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I went up for the header, and I don't know. I like I think someone got under me a little, and I just like fell right on my back. Oh, yeah, that was. Yeah, me. <laughs> it was hard. Wait, because like, she went flying too. Yeah, I was on the ground too. Yeah. Yeah. But the ball went in the goal. Yeah. And that's all that matters. Yeah. <laughs> so um, you guys are out of playoff contention, which is sad. So now you have two games left against two tough opponents, McAllister and then St. Thomas. So, I mean, this is a question for both of you. You can take it one one by one if you'd like. Uh, what are you looking for in these last two games, knowing that you can't make the playoffs? <laughs> well, we're just looking to, you know, play our game and just like go out strong and show them that next year we're going to go harder than we are now. Okay. Yeah. And what, this is a follow up. What, what's the likelihood that this team, I mean, you guys are really young still. What's the likelihood do you think that this team really makes that next step and, and makes the playoffs next year? Um, I think with like all the hard work we've put this year, and like to finish off these games strong, I think there's a, a great chance because last year's team was young and we did decent for that. Mm -hmm. And then for this year improving, I think we have a good chance. Yeah, so I think you won two conference games last year. You've won two this year. You've also tied one, mm -hmm. correct? And so you got two more. That's a, that's a good season. If you win one of these or if you tie one of these, that's, that's a season that I think we can all look back on and be happy with. So uh, a big change this year that you were you, you didn't really notice the change. You were just, oh, Jordan Matthews. Yeah, that's a thing. Uh, what has been <laughs> the biggest adjustment playing with somebody like Jordan Matthews this year, Cassie? Um, I think it's been great having someone like, that is able to like finish when she has her chances and like it makes a difference. Yeah, I mean, cause you had more omissioner last year, but their play style is a little bit different. Yeah. Uh, could you talk about that just a little bit? Um, I feel like Mara is like, like since we had the whole season already and like the connection, I like kind of knew where she was already. And then mm. with, like Jordan, she kind of like demands for the ball and like plays off of that, so. Okay. Yeah, so <laughs> Jordan is from the West Coast. You're both from the West Coast. You're actually, I guess not the West Coast. You're from Las Vegas, Nevada. Yes. So I remember vividly asking you this question last year. Are you ready? Like, are you ready for Minnesota winter? No, I am. <laughs> I don't think I have enough jackets or sweaters or layers. And I have no idea how I'm going to play out. Because everyone's been telling me, like, if I had to tell if every time someone said, you're not ready for this winter. <laughs> I would be so rich. <laughs> well, I hope that you make it through and I hope that you come back next year because yeah. I, it could take a toll on a lot of people. I'm from Chicago, so I'm used to it. Where, it, where are you living this year? Uh, Bro William. You are living in Bro William. So I've never even been in there. Have you been in there, Cassie? Oh, it's really nice. is it nice? Yeah. You guys are, I was in brother. What was it? Benilled. I was in Benilled <laughs> my, my freshman year. So <laughs> tell us a little bit about that. We haven't really heard um, about that on the screen. Brother William's really nice. It's huge. We have our own bathroom. <sighs> <laughs> it's a very large space like me and my roommate we have like so much leftover space that we don't know what to put in there oops but like <laughs> it's just there <laughs> yeah leftover space in vanilla is not exactly something that exists <laughs> um and did you know that like was that did that have anything to do with you choosing saint mary's or was it pretty um, much all soccer no i honestly thought i was gonna like put in scam oh yeah my roommate carried me into it <laughs> i think put you on her back I know, I made her joke of like you brought me into this building buddy. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome is your roommate on the soccer team uh no but i think she's trying out oh again. okay awesome yeah and then cassie who are you rooming with this year uh maya Maya, she is on the soccer team. Reichenbacher. Yes. See, I got the names. I'm the PA of the women's soccer team. It's one of my favorite things <laughs> to do. Um, so I asked Jordan, I've asked Nicole, all you guys are, you're just, you're from so far away and it doesn't really make a lot of sense because it's almost only your team that has all these people from so far away. How did Neil find you and how did you find Neil, I guess? Um, Neil found me. Uh, it was a tournament in Las Vegas, like a showcase and I like emailed all of the coaches 
but like I didn't email him for okay. some reason. So he reached out to me like a couple of days after and he was like, I really like your style of play. I really think you can make an impact. And then me and him just kept in contact. And then I finally came out to visit around this time. And, and was it cold? It was a bit cold, yes. <laughs> hey. It kind of snowed on yeah. <laughs> What? Which game? Did you go to a game? Did you see a game? Um, yeah, it might have. I don't remember the game. Okay. Like, it was 2 1. I think we lost. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But then at, at the end of my visit, it started like snowing a little bit. So I got like a little taste of snow. Had you ever seen snow before? Yes. I okay. Have. Okay. It snowed this year in Vegas. Did it? Yeah. For a, a day. And it was. Okay, I showed my roommate and then a couple of people here the snow day that we had, and they laughed in my <laughs> face. <laughs> they were like, that's, that's your snow day? Because our classmate canceled, but then the administration was like, okay, th the next day they're going to cancel school, but there is no more snow. It was so weird because it all just melted away like so quick. <laughs> and they laughed in my face. They are like, that's snow. You have not seen snow just you wait. Oh, wait yeah. Wait till winter. And just I'm just like, wait. okay. Yeah, just I'll you wait. wait. <laughs> so Cassie, this is your second year on the team. Uh, what is what has changed, if anything has changed? What has changed this year? Um, I think just the confidence in the team overall has gotten better. Like, we're all believing in each other more. Um, it's, just, it's just new year. Mm -hmm. So there's always going to be changes some one way or another. So Are either of you – or? How are you guys feeling about losing Gabby Peterson after this year? <laughs> um, so it's gonna hurt. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I love Gabby so much. <laughs> yeah, even like the short time I've like had with Gabby, it was like and she made like impact like on the field, off the field. And like her energy is gonna be a big thing that we're gonna miss when she leaves. Mm -hmm. okay. And then maybe one more question, unless something else comes up. You maybe I, I've always said you're my favorite player out there because I just love the way you use your body. It's really impressive. You have so much, you have such good ball control, like no matter what happens, but you may be the fastest person out there. It might be you or Nicole. Do you actually know who's faster? You or Nicole? Uh, no. Okay. No, I don't. Are, are you going to say it's you? Sure. Okay. Yeah. See, I got that out of her. Um, have you, I had, this is obligatory. I'm sorry. I have to do it for me, not for anyone else. Just for me. I run track here. Okay. Um, have you ever thought about it? No, I have not. Dang it. Well, maybe think about it because okay. you're really, really, really fast. I said the maybe. same thing to Nicole. Maybe. Don't no, it's don't feel pressured. I just I have to bring it up. I have okay. to do it. So um good luck against McAllister, what Wednesday, and then St. Thomas on Saturday. I'm so sad I'm not gonna get to watch you guys. But um good luck at both games, McAllister, St. Thomas. Hopefully the next time I speak to both of you, St. Mary's is four wins in the Mayak. <laughs> Thanks for coming on the show. Thanks. Okay. And thank you for listening. We'll be right back. I'll give you a more in-depth look at that game from yesterday in which Cassie Ariaga scored the game winning goal. We'll also talk about the men's basketball team. They had a scrimmage yesterday and I learned some things and I'm going to be pretty honest when we come back. So thanks for listening. We'll be right back.
You are listening to The Squeeze with Anthony Pasquazi. I don't know why I just counted down because I'm the only one in the room. I got three, two, what? There was really no point in doing that. But uh, thank you to both Genesis Capacho and Cassie Ariaga for a nice little conversation about the women's soccer team. Uh, they had, okay, I may have been a little too rosy on them at the beginning of the year. I said that they were going to make the playoffs. Alex said that they were one year away. He's looking like he's correct. Uh, I don't think either of us foresaw Jordan Matthews just putting her mark on the season like she did. 15 goals for Jordan Matthews. That's a Mayak leading mark currently. Um, sadly, only four of those have been Mayak goals. So hopefully next year she can contribute a little bit more in the games that truly count. But, okay, this is impressive. Don't get me wrong. 7-0-0 in non-conference. That's a feat. You're better than seven soccer teams. Like that's it's it's impressive. But to me, it doesn't do you much good because you're in a conference in the Mayak that is one of the best soccer conferences outside of the northeast of the country. You're you're in one of the best soccer conferences. Five teams, maybe five, six teams, I would say, are phenomenal programs in the conference. You're not going to get better by playing these cupcake schools like Edgewood and Marion and Ripon and Martin Luther in your preseason. You play the cupcakes two games, maybe three games, but not all seven. I hope next year that Coach Neal ups the out-of-conference schedule just a bit. And I understand what he's doing. It looks really good for recruits when you see 7 0 0. That's really impressive. But I think you have the recruits. You have a, such a good group right now, lacking maybe a goalie. You have such a good group right now. Let them learn. Let them learn from their mistakes. Let them lose a little bit in non conference so that when they get to conference and they go up against these phenomenal programs, like I said, they're used to either losing or playing in close games or having to try so hard because a lot what happened last year and also what happened early on this year is they were losing one goal games and they were losing one goal games very late in which they had the lead or the game was tied. And I think this, that just has to do with mental, mental fortitude. They're, they were so used to playing cupcakes, as I'm going to call them that they didn't know how to finish all 90 minutes. And that came back to bite them in games like St. Kate's and like Gustavus and like Augsburg. So hopefully next year, Neil Cassidy, the head coach, who's done a phenomenal job. I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to criticize him. He's done a phenomenal job. I hope he ups the out-of-conference schedule because I think this team can do a lot of damage and I think it's going to help them more than it's going to hurt them. You don't need the recruits anymore. I mean, obviously continue recruiting, but you did that. You did that part already. Now let the recruits finally get to the point in which you wanted them to get to. That was just a little rant on the women's soccer team. I'm very excited for what they can do next year. Next year is hopefully the year. Uh, they have a lot of sophomores. They have a lot of freshman contributors and the juniors, my class. Wow. <laughs> we, we, we know that they have been the backbone of this team since I got here and to see them finally become seniors and to finally mature into their final season is going to be really fun to watch. And I think we can all expect some good things out of them. Now a team that we can still currently expect good things out of because they are not out of playoff contention yet is the St. Mary's men's soccer team. Now they just got a huge win against a team that they really needed to beat. And they probably would have beat if you asked anybody before the game. And that was a 4-1 win over Hamlin. And somebody had a really good game. I'll let Donnie Nadeau tell you who did. The St. Mary's University and Hamlin men's soccer teams entered Saturday's Mayak matchup with offenses heading in completely opposite directions. The Cardinals arrived at Patterson Field coming off a seven-goal offensive explosion against Martin Luther on Wednesday. The Pipers, meanwhile, hadn't scored seven goals in their last seven games combined, including being shut out in each of their last four contests. That's some quality stuff from our sports information director. And when time expired Saturday, those offenses remained headed in opposite directions. St. Mary scored three unanswered goals, all off the foot of Eli Shemansky. Woof. 
as the Cardinals rolled to a 4-1 Mayak victory. St. Mary scored early and late in grabbing a one-goal lead after the game's opening 45 minutes. John Luke Nahorski got the Cardinals on the board in the 18th minute, and after Hamlin nodded the game 1-1 10 minutes later, Shemansky gave St. Mary's the lead for good, converting his third penalty kick in as many tries says tires. Come on, Donnie. <laughs> With 243 remaining before intermission. He worked so hard. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have done that. But Shemansky wasn't finished, not by a long shot. The sophomore netted his ninth of the season in the 87th minute, and two minutes later notched his 10th of the year, tying him for the team lead with Josh Ball Sigger. Wow, I did not realize they both had 10 goals. That's really fun. To seal the Cardinal victory, Sam Morris the freshman finished with four saves and goal for the Cardinals, while Malachi Zamakana finished with 10 saves, posted 10 saves and goal for the Pipers. The Cardinals, 4-4 four and four in conference, 8-8 eight and eight overall, who moved into a tie with St. John's for the sixth and final Mayak tournament spot, returned to conference play on Tuesday, heading to St. Paul, Minnesota for a 7.30 p.m. Mayak matchup against McAllister. The Pipers, 1-7 and seven in conference, meanwhile, returned to Patterson Field in St. Paul, Minnesota on Tuesday, hosting Gustavus in a 3.30 p.m. conference showdown. Gustavus has already clinched their playoff spot as well as St. Thomas. So again, <laughs> it is all in the hands of this St. Mary's team. If they win out, they will qualify for the playoffs. They have to beat McAllister, and they have to beat St. Thomas. Now, there is a chance that if they get a tie in one of those games, they can squeak in if St. John's falters quite a bit down these down the stretch in these last two games. Both teams are 4-4, four and four, and sadly, if you do remember, St. John's holds the tiebreaker in a 5-3 win here at St. Mary's in a one of the most disgusting, ugliest cold, snowy, windy, rainy days that I've ever seen <laughs> here at St. Mary's. It was just gross. And St. John's won five to three. So they hold the tiebreaker, meaning that the fate of their, I mean, their fate, <laughs> that's how you structure that sentence. Their fate lies in their hands. McAllister is not in the, they are in the playoffs. They're four, three, and one. They have Scored 12 goals in conference, and they've given up eight. So they've played a lot of close games. St. Mary's has also played a lot of close games. That one is going to mean everything for both teams. So St. Mary's is going to need to squeak out with a win there. That's, I think, going to be the harder of the two. You might question that because St. Thomas is in first place in the conference, and they're 8-1. and one. But if St. Mary's... Wins against McAllister, they know that they need to win to make the playoffs. While St. Thomas has already clinched. They clinched before this last game. I mean, they've been clinched for a week and a half already. So by the time St. Mary's plays St. Thomas next Saturday, their fate has already been sealed. So they're not going to be trying nearly as hard as St. Mary's. The hungry team is normally the most dangerous team, and that hungry team is going to be the Cardinals. So McAllister, if they get that win, I love their chances of making the playoffs. And these guys making the playoffs, it would just it would be remarkable because Robbie Sobzak and Josh Balsiger and Yael Calderon and Jimmy Perot, the seniors on this team, Kyle Lichtenegger, they've worked so hard, and they have really seen the turnaround of this program. So to just get them into the playoffs would be huge for everybody involved, and I hope they do so, and I think that they will. That has been a lot of St. Mary sports. <laughs> I didn't know I could talk about St. Mary sports for this long because we actually hadn't ever done one of these one-hour squeeze shows. The reason they're one hour is because Alec has his scouting duty, so he's quite busy all the time, and then I have my own show on KWNO, every Saturday from one to three. And I, my first show was last weekend, uh, not yesterday, but last weekend. And I made a joke that wasn't really a joke. It was, it was kind of, it was truthful before my show was the Rush Limbaugh show, I believe. And, uh, one of his commercials was a, my pillow commercial. So for me to come on directly leading from a, my pillow commercial was a dream come true. <laughs> because I've been listening to sports radio for six years of my 20 year life uh, since I was 14. And uh, to finally, 
be able to talk after a my pillow commercial these commercials that i've been hearing for six years was kind of cool so it made me giddy every time i hit the spot block to play the ads it was like oh my gosh i'm on the air this is crazy uh this is really off topic but that's why we are only doing one hour squeezes from here on out pretty much just saint mary's sports the last sport that i'm going to talk about here today in regards to the cardinals is the men's basketball team. We'll talk about the women's basketball team next week after they have a scrimmage against UW Lacrosse here at St. Mary's Gymnasium. But, okay. Basketball is one of my favorite sports. It's one of my favorite sports to watch in person. College basketball, I enjoy more than the NBA. And very quickly, I have learned to enjoy the game of Division Three basketball in a way that I never thought I would. It sounds kind of goofy, but I've really fallen in love with the Division Three game and with the Mayak because the Mayak is a storied basketball conference. And St. Mary's has never, ever, 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 ever been a part of that storied history. They, they just haven't. And before that scrimmage yesterday, I was sold. I was all in on this basketball team going all the way. I was even telling a few people, uh, I probably shouldn't admit this. I was even telling a few people that I thought maybe they could finish in third place in the conference behind St. Thomas and St. John's. Now, I'm not going to rush to judgment. I'm not. I'm not going to do that after one scrimmage against a UMAC team. But what I saw yesterday did not make me feel great about where this team is at. I'm trying not to be biased because I'm friends with everybody on the team. I'm really close with the coaches, Coach Fano and Coach Brown. I talk to them all the time. I know them well. They didn't look ready yesterday. They really did not look ready. They came out in that first scrimmage. They played three 20-minute scrimmages against UW Superior. And they just looked flat. Now, that could be because it was simply a scrimmage. It was basically just a practice. They were in their practice uniforms. Uh, they were playing odd rotations, rotations that they're not going to use over the course of a season. But they just looked flat, and it scared me a bit. Uh, some of the players that I thought were going to improve over the summer didn't. Um, others did. Then in game two, it looked like this team was the team that I expected them to be. They played a group of five. It looked like they had, they didn't have a five for sure. And at times it looked like they didn't even have a four. They were practically running an all guard lineup and UW Superior could not combat it. It was awesome. They were playing athletic. They were, I mean, Kareem had a steal and a block and a, almost a dunk on back to back to back plays. It was, it was, it was incredible stuff. They played the athletic brand of basketball that I was expecting from them. And also I don't have the roster cause they haven't, they haven't put the roster up yet, which is unfortunate cause I don't know the freshmen or the transfers names at this very moment, but they have two transfers, Deshaun Pickford, and then one other he's number 11 and they're both point guards. Wow. We went from not having a true point guard last year to having two, maybe three true point guards this year. And also, the biggest thing that I wasn't expecting that I did see was Kevin Gleason. Not only is he the three-point champion, Night at the Nest, I don't know if Frankie was there. Um, not only was he the three-point champion, but he looks huge. He looks like he put on maybe 10 pounds of muscle. He looks phenomenal, and he was playing lights out. They didn't take statistics because it was just a scrimmage. It didn't matter at all. But he was shooting like I've never seen him shoot before. So if he continues that, wow. Now you have a shooting guard who can routinely put up 15, 20 points. That to go along with the athletic play of Eli Cave and Kareem Anthony Bello. This team, it's so, I'm, I'm conflicted now. Because I hadn't seen them for so long, I fell in love with all of the good things that could happen with them. And I felt like only, they would only improve and they're only going to get better. They're only going to get stronger. They're only going to get faster. It, it dampened my expectations just a bit because finally for the first time I saw who improved, who worked over the summer and who didn't. I'm not going to call anybody out yet because some of these people could have really awesome seasons and it was just a bad scrimmage. I'm not making any judgments. I'm not, I'm not going to sit here and say, yes, they're making the playoffs, or no, they're not. I'm just going to say it worried me a bit. 
just a bit. But I think they're going to be exciting. And I think they're going to be good. Uh, Raheem, Kareem's brother, quickly learned that it is no longer high school basketball. In the first game, he was penetrating a lot, and he just couldn't get in. Uh, and then he'd turn the ball over, or he would try and take a really highly contested shot. In the second game, he learned from his mistakes. He penetrated, didn't get all the way in, and then passed it out and made some really nice assists. So if he's a quick learner, that could be something that Coach Fano utilizes. And then my last point before we go to break and then talk to Frankie back Lars, my last point about this men's basketball team is this. I said this to one of my good friends yesterday while watching the scrimmage. It looks like Coach Fano has every piece he needs. He's maybe missing a really quality five, but the freshman Nick, I don't know his last name. I know his first name is Nick. He's a big kid. He's a Connor Bear type, Connor Bear of the St. Tommy, Thomas Tommies. He might be the five we're looking for. I think he needs to get a little bit more athletic. He, he just needs to get a little bit more in shape. And that could happen with the guidance of Coach Matt Sager, who we've had on the show before. But Coach Fano has almost every piece he needs. So now I think it's on him. I really do think it's on him because he finally has a couple recruits that are going to really put their mark on this team. He's got every piece. It's just going to be how he and Coach Brown maneuver those pieces across the chessboard. That will that that will ultimately decide how well they do this season. They have so many scorers. They have so many good defenders. It's just going to be how does he manage how does he manage the egos? How does he manage the rotations? This is the first time that St. Mary's basketball has expectations since I've been here, and probably since I've been alive, <laughs> you know, I mean, so let's see how they manage those expectations because there are a lot of good kids on this team and they're going to be good. They're going to be exciting at least. We'll be right back. Thanks for listening to this squeeze. We'll be right back with Frankie Bacalars uh, on YouTube. If you haven't already hit that subscribe button, also hit the like button and we'll be right back. You are listening to The Squeeze with Anthony Pasquazi and uh, Frankie Bacalars, who's our weekly college football contributor here on The Squeeze. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button, please. 
hit that like button, please. It helps us a lot. I promise it does. I don't really know how it helps us actually, but YouTubers say that all the time. So I, I'm pretty sure. I need you to smash that subscribe sm button. Smash it. Uh, yeah, that was a bad segue, but <laughs> <laughs> paid the big bucks. That's why I'm sitting here and not on 670 the score just yet. But um, if you do remember a couple weeks ago, you had a great idea to pick to mm -hmm. kind of have a draft to each pick four teams that we think would finish with the highest seeds. Yeah. It was a great idea. And uh, some things have happened. So Frankie yeah. picked Georgia, Wisconsin, LSU, and Washington. <laughs> Alec <laughs> picked Clemson, Oklahoma, Boise State, and Oregon. And I picked Alabama, Ohio State, Notre Dame, and Florida. So each of us have picked a team yeah, that's... that got – Brutalized, basically, wow. in an upset. Um, Notre Dame lost by 31 points last night to Michigan in one of the most embarrassing losses is, I've ever yeah. witnessed as a Fighting Irish fan. Was it at? It was, was it at no. Michigan? It, was, it was at Michigan. It was, at Michigan. It, was it was at Notre. Ugh, that would be tough. Yeah. Al or Alec, Oklahoma lost to Kansas State. Yep. By by a touchdown, so that was yeah, not terrible. It, not it terrible, but Jalen Hurts still had a great game. Though, yeah. So. And it was an upset. Yeah. <laughs> And then you want to talk about what happened? Yeah, well, two we weeks ago, not it. last. This week makes sense, but two weeks ago, what happened? Two weeks ago, Wisconsin played the worst game in the history of Wisconsin Badger football <laughs> and lost to Illinois. And, but you know it, it happens, Squeeze. It happens. <laughs> no, it doesn't. Jonathan Taylor broke five thousand yards that game. It was still where we have to look at the positives. Is Wisconsin going to make the Big Ten championship anymore? No, I I don't. So no, my my hot takes are out the window. Yeah, I think, I think the best thing Wisconsin can do now is just go kill Minnesota. I hope they do. Yeah, I think that is the best thing Wisconsin can do right now is yeah. go kill Minnesota. And in that case, I think Wisconsin still has a chance to make yeah, the best. Yeah, because Minnesota, yeah, they're because they're, they're going to lose to Penn State. Obviously, Wisconsin is. Or Minnesota. Minnesota is going to lose to Penn yeah. State, which isn't going to really matter because you already lost to Ohio State. Yeah. The big one's going to be that Illinois loss. So if Wisconsin can bludgeon Minnesota and they're both two lost teams, Wisconsin will have the tiebreaker. And there we go. Wisconsin yeah. can march and get absolutely destroyed again, again by, Ohio, by State. Ohio State. But we'll be there. But at least you'll be there, just like Northwestern was last year. What in the world happened to Northwestern, man? They're one in set, one in eight, one in seven. I don't know. They were the electric factory last year. They had their coach that – the strength coach that yes. wore the cut oh off polo I, yeah. just going yeah. nuts pregame. They – by a billion. Yeah. They were – Nothing this year. Now just – Absolutely nothing. They're back to old Northwestern football. And then – yeah, old Northwest for sure. Um, And then I'm a Big Ten fan. Are you a Big Ten yeah, fan? Yeah, for okay. sure, yeah. I don't – you have a team, Wisconsin. Yeah. I don't have a team that I root for in the yeah. Big Ten. Uh, the team I root for is Notre Dame. So as a Big Ten fan, it's good – to see Ohio State do well. Yeah. But even if you're a Big Ten fan, you still don't really like Ohio State. See, I never really like – I don't know. I never really had a huge problem with Ohio State just because they never – I mean, they always beat Wisconsin. So, like, <laughs> back in the day, pretty much everyone beat Wisconsin. Yeah. And, like, it's good. I am a Big Ten fan, so it's good to see them kind of maybe one day go knock off Alabama or, you know, that'd be cool. Like, if it was – a Ohio State Alabama like semifinal game or national championship game, I'm rooting for Ohio State 100. Yeah. percent So I mean, I never really had a personal problem with Ohio State, but I would like to see Wisconsin beat them. Yeah, like I think in 2008 maybe Wisconsin beat Ohio State. Ohio State was number one in the country. Okay, and Camp Randall, Wisconsin's field was just flooded with students. <laughs> they tore down the goalposts. Oh like, yeah, yeah, it was just nuts. I'd like to see that again. Okay. That'd be cool to see. Yeah, I would but, too. And I don't think it's going to happen again this year if they play them again. Probably not in the Big Ten no. Championship. And and this is the, the other question. I mean, I guess it, it. I know the answer because you're a Wisconsin fan. You just said it. Like for me, I would rather see Ohio State beat Wisconsin in the in the Big Ten Championship because if if Ohio State loses, the Big Ten has cannibalized itself so much yeah. this year that no one is going to make the playoff if Ohio State um, loses, which would be unfortunate. Yeah, I mean. Yeah. I mean, I hate to see, like, three SEC teams yeah. in the playoff. Ugh. LSU, like, Alabama, and but Georgia. It, I like I like what you said about, like, cannibalizing it because literally the Big Ten has just been a doghouse this year. Like, teams are just great beating conference. teams. Like, 
Wisconsin beat both the Michigans and they lost to Illinois. And then, you know, it's just nuts. Maryland's still terrible. Mm -hmm. And Rutgers is still terrible. They have one. They have one Big Ten touchdown this year. One. They scored one touchdown. How is that even? Why is okay? We don't need to have this conversation yet. Rutgers. Why is Rutgers in the Big Ten? It doesn't make any sense. Why is Maryland in the Big Ten? It doesn't make any I sense. I remember being like thirteen, and my dad was like, "You know, Rutgers during the Big Ten," <laughs> and I was like, "Why?" Like even thirteen-year-old me was like, "Why? What is Rutgers?" It makes no sense. However, I do have beef with Rutgers, though. Really. Because it's not football related; it's basketball related. Yeah. The year the bad the Badgers went to um, the national championship in basketball. Rutgers upset Frank the Badgers the that year. Yeah, with Frank, Frank the Tank. Frank the Tank. Frank the Tank got a concussion that game. Really? And Sam Decker and Frank the Tank both went out with injuries, and Rutgers beat Wisconsin. Bronson so, Koenig. Uh, Bronson Koenig again from my hometown. Really? Yeah. Oh, he's from Lacrosse. I yeah. knew that. He went to yeah. Central, right? Aquinas, the <laughs> oh, private Aquinas. school. Okay, my bad. No, he um, yeah, Bronson Koenig. That's a candy. Who else was on that team? I watched that team a lot. Uh, Sam Decker, Frank Kaminsky, Josh Gasser. Um, who was the lefty? Trayvon Jackson. Yes, I Trayvon. He was good. He got he got hurt. He like tore his mm-hmm. something in his leg. So that's why Bronson kind of had his yeah. like come up was because he started for him as a sophomore. Hmm. But Bronson Kane, he Frank the Tank was actually he knew my cousin. Like really? the, he's, he's from, from he's Chicago. Chicago. Yeah, 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 he's from the Chicago land area. So that's kind of funny that like oh. he, he yeah, came Bronson. From. Yeah, I remember, <laughs> I remember being because I don't know if you know who Matt Thomas is. I don't. He's from Onalaska, Wisconsin. Okay. He plays for the Raptors now. Whoa. Yeah, he was overseas for three years, and he was the same class as Bronson. Wow. So when Aquinas and Onalaska played each other because they're both in the same conference, they actually had to host the game at the Lacrosse Center that is because crazy. the attendance was like it was like. 12,000 or something like that. That's it was just crazy. nuts. It was a really good game. They went to double OT. I was in like sixth grade. Yeah. That was pretty cool. That is pretty that's awesome. really side. We just got really sidetracked. Yeah, no, hey, sometimes that's good. the best. I've been in here by myself for a while. Yeah. So it's good to talk to somebody. Good to get a little, yeah, I'm, little rap session. Yeah. In. I had Genesis Capacho and Cassie Ariaga in yeah. for a joint interview. That was fun. Um, but yeah, it's been pretty much smooth sailing by just, myself, just staring into that weird camera. If anyone can do it. It's the squeeze kind. It's, it's the squeeze. <laughs> I don't. I don't routinely call myself the squeeze. I think I'd be a little bit too much of a debag if I did. Yeah, that. yeah, yeah. I'd, uh, that'd be bad. No, I. I mean, I'll, you could call me the squeeze. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's. The, I don't think I've called you Anthony since I went to St. Mary's. No, I'm surprised you even know my name. Like, I think you introduced yourself as Anthony, and then everybody was like, "No, like, he's squeeze. He's not Anthony." I'm gonna tell you guys a little secret. Close your ears. Um, I don't really like the nickname, the squeeze. I kind of like my name, but a lot of people call me squeeze. So it's like, I don't really know what I'm doing. I don't know how to stop it, but it's fine. Cause it's, it's, it's brand recognition. It so is. you can continue calling me the squeeze. It's okay. It is. I wear a squeeze shirt at, you did lifts, at least hey, every week. You wore a squeeze shirt last night. at your Halloween party. Yep. Dressed up as a squeeze bear. Squeeze bear. A sure. Sque- sure. <laughs> yeah, sure. A squeeze bear. A squeeze bear. A fan of the squeeze. Um, yeah. Uh, this has been no. – this is it. Do you have anything else you want to say? Oh, I mean, really cool about that Minnesota guy, though. We didn't talk about that. What happened? The guy who held the field goal, he had, like, cancer four times. Oh, yes. That's I did. Cool. Yeah. I mean, that's all I'll say. That's cool. That is pretty love cool. love to see that. I saw the, the video of the coach and him just yeah. that embrace. Like, and... Yeah. More than a game. Pete, yeah. More than a game. <laughs> More than a game. <laughs> you know what? That really touched you, didn't yeah. it? No, you like, I like. I, not, I really like. Stuff yeah, like you're that. not being facetious at no, all. You're no, like, I really like stuff like that's that. That's really cool. You know, like, he was really good too. Yeah. He's from Minnetonka. Really, his quarterback you know, obviously had cancer like four times and got a Big Ten play. Man, that's awesome. You know, yeah. jerker. Rudy, Rudy. Yeah, except this guy's not a jerk. Yeah, and except it's not just that he's bad. Yeah, he's, he's just he almost cancer. died. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, that's a little different. Well. As uh, has been the theme of squeezes alone with me, the landing gear has been a little rough. Uh, landing the plane was a little tough. That was an okay landing, a little rough, a little, oh, yeah. a little rough to set, but we're done. So but. thanks for listening. Uh, we'll be back, or I'll be back next week. I hope he'll be back next week at 1150. Yeah. I, I think so. Yeah. You know, get this. Okay, this is the last bus toss that I have before we sign off. Um, Alec told him 
that he wasn't going to be on the show before he told me like three days yeah, before he told, he told me, me like on Thursday, I think he told, he told me that Alec wasn't no, going to be on I the show. I told you at lifts yesterday yeah, on Friday. On Friday. Like, I'm like, I no, he's coming on the show. He never said it. I was me. like, Oh, like maybe things change, but no, he's not. Alec's not here. Yeah. Bus toss. So there you go. Alec just push you. I mean, he's doing what he loves, which is important. I'm not, I, Whatever, I don't need to say it on the air. But we'll be back next week. At least I know I'll be back next week at 11 o'clock to talk about, well, the last week in soccer. Hopefully we're talking about a men's playoff team and then hockey gets underway as well. So their first real competition will be next week. We'll be here to talk about it. Thanks for listening to The Squeeze.